All right, let's consider the problem of making change for a certain amount of money, say for a dollar. And the question that we have is how many different ways are there to do that? So for a dollar, for instance, we can make change for that with a half dollar, a quarter, two dimes, and a nickel, or we can just use four quarters, we can use two quarters, two dimes, and 30 pennies, we can use 100 pennies, we can use 10 dimes, 20 nickels, and so on. So it seems like there's a lot of ways to make change for a dollar. And what we want is we want to come up with an algorithm and eventually an implementation for computing how many different ways there are to make change for any amount. In order to do this, it's really useful to actually draw out what all the possibilities are for some small example and then to figure out how to categorize them to come up with an algorithm an algorithm that will work in the general case. Now with a dollar, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So let's not look at it for a dollar, let's look at it for a simpler example, how to make how many ways there are to make change for 11 cents. Okay, so for 11 cents, the only coins that we can use are dimes, nickels, and pennies. And what we can do is we can make a decision as to whether or not to use a dime. Okay, so we can figure out how many ways can we make change for 11 cents using a dime, and then how many ways are there to do it without using a dime. Okay, so if I use a dime, there's actually only one way to make change for that, make 11 cents with that, which is a dime plus a penny. If I decide that I don't want to use dimes for whatever reason, then I'm left with just nickels and pennies to use. And now I can go through the same process of deciding whether or not to use a nickel. Okay, so if I use a nickel, then there's actually two different ways to do that. Either I use two nickels and a penny, or I use a nickel and six pennies. If I decide that I don't want to use a nickel, and I'm still not allowed to use dimes, then there's only one way to make 11 cents, which is to use all 11 pennies. Okay, so it looks like we can actually go through this decision process of deciding whether to use a coin or not. If we decide we're not going to use a coin, then what we have are a fewer set of coins available to us in order to make the same amount of change. Now this is a simpler subproblem. Okay, we have two inputs, which is the amount of change that we need to make, as well as the set of coins we're allowed to use. We are reducing the, the size of the set of coins that we're allowed and that makes it a simpler subproblem. So we can use recursion to compute how many ways there are to do that. If we do decide to use a coin, then that changes the total amount that we need to make. So if I decide to use a dime, then that dime takes up 10 of the 11 cents that I need to make, and I'm left with how many ways there are to make just one cent. And similarly, if I get to using a nickel, that nickel takes up five of the 11 cents, and what I'm left with is how many ways there are to make six cents using just nickels and pennies. Okay, once again, we have a simpler subproblem. What we're doing is we're reducing the amount of change that we need to make while keeping the set of coins we're allowed to use the same. Either way, one of our inputs is decreasing, and so we're getting to a simpler subproblem that we can apply recursion to. Okay, so let's actually generalize this into an algorithm. If I want to make an, an amount A in change and I have N kinds of coins, then I can decide either I'm going to use my last kind of coin or I'm going to throw that coin away and only stick to the first N minus one coins. Okay, so those are my two subproblems. If I use the last kind of coin, then what I'm doing is I'm reducing the amount I need to form by the denomination of that coin. Okay, so if that last coin happened to be a dime, then I'm reducing the total amount I need to make by 10 cents. If I decide I'm not going to use the last kind of coin, then what I'm doing is I am keeping the amount of change I need to make the same, but I am reducing the set of coins that I'm allowed to, do, to use, namely all but the last kind of coin. Okay, so this algorithm works in the general case, and we can go ahead and implement this using a function. So let's actually proceed to do that. And I'll pause here for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and think about it on your own. Think about what the base cases are. So what are the cases where we know that we have, we can't actually make change? What are the cases where there's only one way to make that amount of change using the coins that we have? So again, take a few seconds to pause the video and think about it on your own, and then we will talk about it together.
All right, so let's actually talk about the base cases. Okay, so looking at my inputs, I have amount, which is the amount of change I need to make. I have the set of coins, which is represented using a pointer to the beginning of an array, which has the denominations of those coins, as well as the number of coins that we have available. So if my amount ever ends up being negative, there's no way I can make a negative amount because I don't have any negative coins. And so that's one base case. If my amount is less than zero, then there's no ways to make that amount of change. Also, if I run out of coins, if I don't have any coins available, so num kinds is zero, then no matter what the amount is, I can't actually make that amount of change, okay? Because I don't have any coins to use to make that. Okay, so if I run out of coins, there's also no ways to make that change. Finally, if my amount is exactly zero, there's only one way to make exactly zero, a change of zero, which is to use no coins at all. Okay, so if I ever reach an amount that's zero, then there's exactly one way to do that, which is use no coins at all. Okay, so that covers the base cases, and we can go ahead and start implementing this. So let's start by writing the base cases. Okay, and as we discussed, if I ever get to a zero amount, there's exactly one way to make that amount of change, and that way is to use no coins at all. On the other hand, if I get to a negative amount, then I can't actually make that change no matter what I do. And the other case where I can't make change is if I run out of coins. Okay, so if the number of kinds of coins I have available to me gets down to zero, then there's also no way to do that as well. Okay. Now the last case is where I do have coins available to me, and now I get to make the decision. Am I going to use the last kind of coin, or am I not going to? And again, those two cases are independent. And all the ways that I can make the amount of change for what the coins I have are going to be are going to fit into one of those two subcategories. So all I have to do is recursively figure out how to make each of those two cases and then add those up and that gives me the total amount of ways to make the amount change with the coins that I have. Okay, so we have use the last coin and in that case the amount I need to make goes down by the denomination of of that last coin. And so here it will be in the kinds array at index num kinds minus one. And the set of coins that I can use to make the rest of that change is exactly the same. Okay, and my other option is I don't use the last coin in which case the amount of change that I need to make stays the same. But the set of coins that I have decreases. I throw away the last coin, so the number of coins that I have decreases by one. And again, those two subcategories encompass all of the ways for making amount change out of the coins that I have. 